deserts are barren areas of land where the precipitation received is less than 10 inches of rainfall per year. They're famous for being dry, extremely hot, and often very remote. As such, some people imagine them to be lifeless, boring, and dangerous places. Granted, they can be extremely dangerous, but they aren't dull and boring at all. In fact, as you're about to see, deserts can be extremely fascinating, freaky even, and at times, fun. And there's way more to them than you'd expect. 15 Most Shocking Things Captured in the Desert Desert Flood A cyclone in southern Oman slammed into the Gulf country and neighboring Yemen, soaking the region with nearly three years' worth of rainfall in a single day. It caused flash flooding that washed away roadways and submerged others, stranding drivers. Strong winds knocked over streetlights and tore away roofing. Not good. What they captured in a desert shocked the whole world. The dry desert landscape was suddenly alive as the ground dry was incapable of absorbing the rainwater. Rising waters formed rivers that rushed so powerfully that they almost appeared to create waves. Rainwater cascading over rocky hills created waterfalls, and the sudden freak rainstorm created a desert flood like nothing locals had seen before. The storm's momentum took everyone by surprise. Officials reported that up to 14 and a half inches of rain fell in a day. Keep in mind, this region averages between three and four inches of rain per year. So, this was really a shock. You can imagine the wonderment of children who rarely see swimmable ravines and the fascination of the adults that stop their vehicles to take photos. As the storm crossed the coast, its maximum sustained winds were almost 75 miles per hour, equivalent to a hurricane. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. Although it might seem otherworldly, strange circular formations like this do exist on Earth, like the Eye of the Sahara in Western Africa. On the ground, it's about 25 miles across, and the huge and mysterious geologic formation is hard to spot walking around on Earth. But from space? That's a whole other story. What they discovered in the desert shocked the whole world, and it's captured our imaginations. Some have proposed that everything from giants to advanced ancient civilizations could be responsible for this desert formation. Originally, scientists thought the structures were an impact crater from a meteor striking the Earth, but now they know that molten rock pushed up toward the surface, creating a dome of rock layers like a big pimple on our planet's face, and eventually, it popped. So that might explain the circular perimeter in this image. But what's up with the altar-like peak in the center? Scientists would have us think it was a man-made structure, but other people believe it could be some sort of alien landing pad. What do you think? Earthlings, extraterrestrials, or nature in all its glory? Use the hashtag sweet topic with your comments. Jumping Cactus This might be one of the worst things to come across in the desert, jumping chola. This cactus is native to Mexico in the southwestern United States. Now, despite its magnificent beauty, people will be surprised about the fact that this plant has a nasty side. Its barbed cactus spines can attach to people and animals coming too close, resulting in a common painful reaction. Often the merest touch will leave a person with bits of cactus hanging on their clothes to be discovered later when either sitting or leaning on them. And as you can see, it's as painful as it looks. They can form a forest of needles. When there are a lot of jumping cholas growing near each other, they often build a forest-like canopy. This area is quite dangerous to humans and animals alike because of the cholas' sharp spines, which are identical to porcupine spines. Your skin can easily tear and get caught in these spines, even penetrating as deep as your muscle fibers. Ouch! Help! Get this off me! Are a few of the explicitives echoing on some of these desert trails. That's because of the jumping chola cactus. More precisely, that's because some unwary hiker has somehow touched or was touched by the spines of this grabby succulent. Iron Ore Train Riding Mauritania's Iron Ore Train is definitely unforgettable. It doesn't matter if you're eastbound or westbound. It's all about the journey, not the destination. The Iron Ore Train is the longest freight train in the world. Consisting of more than 200 carriages and three or four locomotives, the train can reach over a mile in length and carry 17,000 tons of iron ore, making it one of the longest and heaviest trains in the world. The train runs from an iron mine to the coast, about 435 miles across the Mauritanian Sahara. 
And as you can see, traveling on this train often happens in open wagons, where people sleep on the iron ore. Hitchhiking on this train and sitting atop a bed of iron ore is not an easy ride, but it can be the train ride of a lifetime. The train runs through one of the harshest environments on Earth. It's sun-scorched during the day and bitterly cold at night, and you'd better prepare for both as there's no shelter on the train. If you're wondering about toilets, the answer is no, there aren't any. There's also no way to stock up on your food supplies. It can be dangerous as there are no barriers, emergency brakes, or in fact, safety measurements of any kind. It takes approximately 19 hours to cover the entire distance. <laughs> Zakistan It was 2005 and a New York-based artist named Zach Landsberg was talking with some friends about cheap land for sale. As a Californian who had traveled all around the American Southwest, he figured he should own a piece of the American West before it's all gone. So the artist made a bid of $610 for a plot and forgot all about it. A few days later, he was notified that he had won four acres of inhospitable desert in Utah. After a brief visit with a friend and a few months later, he declared it the United Republics of Zakistan, now simply the Republic of Zakistan, and began the process of creating his own country. The country grants citizenship for free to anyone who asks for it, with the option of obtaining a passport for a suggested US $50 fee. Since its founding, the Republic of Zakistan has garnered national attention simply for existing. No permanent residents call the land home, though Landsberg and a squad of Zakistanis who've petitioned for citizenship from Zakistan's Department of State make pilgrimages there once or twice a year. If you'd like to visit, know this. Services like Google Maps will not be able to get you directly to Zakistan as it doesn't recognize these trails as roads. The best way to get there is to take the old railroad grade road and then use satellite images of the trails. Horror Movie Gas Station This eerie movie set in Morocco remains virtually untouched since it featured in a 2006 slasher flick that saw a helpless family lured to their doom. The Hills Have Eyes is a very, very scary movie. Now abandoned, the creepy gas station played a pivotal part in the protagonist's demise, as if they had taken an ill-advised shortcut. The reroute would lead them into a trap where psychotic, cannibalistic creatures would torture people. But it's not based on a true story, thank goodness. Appearing to be an abandoned gas station with rusted American cars and fanciful puppets, Gas Haven provides a one-of-a-kind experience. It's still stocked with goods and is often mistaken for a working gas station. It sits along the highway, then runs through a small commune outside a city known as Hollywood's Door to the Desert. It's a hot spot for desert-based film sets and on-location shooting. Although the station doesn't say much about the movie, it's the perfect place for children and Instagrammers who can enter the sets freely without being disturbed. The mystical atmosphere of the movie is a well-reflected one thanks to the landscape around the station. Even for those who aren't familiar with the movie, the old station is a chilling sight. Newspaper Rock Located in San Juan County, Utah, along Utah State Route 211, Newspaper Rock is a monument featuring a rock panel carved with one of the largest known collections of petroglyphs, a mixture of human, animal, material, and abstract forms. There are over 650 rock art designs. The 200-square-foot rock is a part of the vertical sandstone cliffs that enclose the upper end of Indian Creek Canyon and is covered by hundreds of petroglyphs one of the largest, best-preserved, and easily accessed groups in the Southwest. The indigenous founders of the region have been engraving and drawing on newspaper rock in Utah for more than 2,000 years. Their markings in these ruins tell the stories, hunting patterns, crop cycles, and mythologies of their lives. But what exactly these Utah petroglyphs are communicating, we'll never know, for there's no actual translation available at this remarkable attraction. As one of the largest collections of petroglyphs in the country, Utah's Newspaper Rock State Historic Monument is like a living museum. However, thankfully, you don't have to peer at the pristine rock art through glass at this site. <laughs> Desert Skyscrapers The first known inscription about this city dates from the 3rd century, so it's as ancient as ancient gets. In a region of desert in north-central Yemen, the city of Shabam is best known for its towering mud-brick skyscrapers. Shabam was founded in the 3rd century AD, but most of the houses you see here date only to the 16th century. 
This small town of 7,000 is packed with around 500 mud houses standing between 5 and 11 stories tall and reaching 100 feet high, all constructed entirely of mud bricks. The houses need to be rebuilt over the centuries. Rain and erosion have been constant threats to the buildings here. To protect their homes, residents must thickly coat the facades and roofs with sealant and ensure they are maintained and regularly renovated. The bizarre skyline that the high-rise buildings bestow upon the city has earned Shabam the moniker Manhattan of the Desert, contains the oldest skyscraper city in the world and is one of the oldest and best examples of urban planning based on the principle of vertical construction. In general, the windowless lower floors are used for grain storage. The highest rooms are for communal use by the whole family and on the upper levels, there are often bridges and doors connecting the houses. The Car Forest Finding quirky things around different states is always a fun adventure, but it's especially exciting if it looks like a colorful forest made out of automobiles in the middle of the desert. The International Car Forest of the Last Church in Nevada is a towering grove of old painted cars rising from the ground like ancient trees. Outside of Goldfield, Nevada, this art installation is both whimsically vintage and uniquely wild. Today, over 40 automobiles, including cars, trucks, and vans, have been balanced delicately on their ends or stacked on top of one another, looking like a group of toys some giant baby simply left lying about. Each of the junked cars also has been uniquely painted with designs varying from skulls to caricatures to abstract forms. It's now part of the American automotive zeitgeist because of its unique car installations. It's not something that one usually stumbles upon. It's a destination most automobile admirers long to visit and is an inspiration for artists everywhere. And it's completely free to visit. Plus, you can snap some incredible photos while you explore, but avoid climbing on the vehicles. The old cars give the area an eerie, abandoned look, but the colorful art transforms it. <laughs> potash Ponds You would not want to take a dip in these waters as they're actually potash evaporation ponds looked after by the United States' largest producer of potassium chloride. But just look at them! In the midst of the barren desert in Utah, this collection of startling, beautiful, electric-colored ponds creates a strange, otherworldly landscape. The potash source comes from the Paradox Basin, which has been there for an estimated 300 million years and sits 3,000 feet below the ground. As the sun evaporates, the water in the pond, crystals of potassium and salt, are left behind. The bizarre ponds provide a brilliant contrast to the barren, red desert that surrounds them, with the color providing the optimum aid for the absorption of sunlight and evaporation. Extraction involves drilling wells into the mines and pumping hot water to dissolve the potassium. Brine is drawn out of the mines to the surface and fed to the colorful pools, where the evaporation process begins. The crystals are scraped from the ponds by machines producing around 700 and 1,000 tons of potash per day from the mine. These saltwater pools collect and store solar thermal energy and can be used for solar power generation as well. Colorful and useful. 4,000-year-old cemetery Literally, Little River Cemetery, this 4,000-year-old cemetery is located in the west of Lop Nur in western China. From it, the remains of more than 30 people have been excavated. The bodies, which have been buried in airtight oxhide bags, are so well preserved that they've often been referred to as mummies. Analysis of their genetic makeup has revealed that they represent both West Eurasian and East Eurasian ancestry. The cemetery complex contains the largest number of mummies found at any single site in the world to date. The bodies are likely to have been transported significant distances for burial here. The cemetery was discovered in the early 20th century when a local hunter was wandering through a patch of inhospitable desert when he stumbled across this forest of wooden poles with human bones and ancient religious artifacts littered around. Believing the place to be haunted, he hurried away, never to return again. The cemetery lies on top of a small sand dune. The wooden posts, whose tops have been splintered by centuries of strong wind, are the tombstones of those who lie buried beneath. The dry summer and frigid winters have helped preserve the bodies to such an extent that one can still see the features and contours of their faces. Snowflake Community 
The small Arizona town of Snowflake has become something of a safe haven for people afflicted with what they call environmental illness. Sufferers complain of sensitivity to things like Wi-Fi, perfume, synthetic fabrics, pesticides, newspaper ink, or traffic fumes. Symptoms are said to range from muscle pain and fatigue to burning sensations, headaches, and nausea. Breathing problems, dizziness, itching, sneezing, and rashes are also commonly reported. Medically, it's referred to as multiple chemical sensitivity, or MCS, and it's an apparent allergy to everyday chemicals and technology. And Snowflake is a popular choice for folks who struggle with it. Residents say they're allergic to everything from electromagnetic radiation and pesticides to laundry detergent and synthetic fabrics. The rest of Snowflake's 5,000 or so residents have had 20 years to adjust to the community that likes to keep to itself. However, many doctors do not recognize MCS as a medical illness, instead saying it's a psychosocial condition, a type of mental illness caused or influenced by life experiences. One U.S. estimate suggests that between 2 and 10 percent of people may have some disruption in their lives because of MCS. Abandoned Disney Monorail A monorail is a railway in which the track consists of a single rail or a beam. The term is also used to describe the beam of the system or the trains traveling on such a beam or track. The first monorail prototype was made in 1820, and if you've ever been, the most popular mode of transportation at Disneyland and Disney World is the monorail. Since its inception, the train has been at all their theme parks. Although many Disney fans may assume that Disney has all of the monorail on the property, one was recently found a little far away from home. A collector purchased this one, and it's located on private property in Nevada. The train ran at Disney World until the mid-90s when it was sold to MGM Grand in Las Vegas, and in the early 2000s, the system was expanded and this one was retired. However, the fact remains that the location of the retired monorail is a mystery, but its legacy lives on forever here. Some folks have interesting taste in front yard decorations, like a bird bath, a garden gnome, or maybe a pink flamingo. These people have other ideas. They enjoy a full-sized original retired monorail from Disney World. The rock band Toto's iconic song Africa from the 1980s is being played on a never-ending loop in a new art installation. Developed by Namibian artist Max Seidentopf, the art installation features seven white platforms constructed in the Namib desert of Africa. On top of the tallest platform rests an MP3 player playing Africa on repeat with six speakers surrounding it. The installation runs on solar batteries to keep Toto going for all eternity. The song was released in 1982, but it's been dubbed the internet's favorite song with hundreds of thousands of fans across the web. The music video has hundreds of millions of views on YouTube as well. Even music experts have joked it's the best song ever made. So this artist might be onto something. The desert on the west coast of southern Africa is around 55 million years old, making it the world's oldest desert and the perfect spot for his artwork. Some people love it, and some say it's probably the worst sound installation ever. The artist has included a map on his website, which has the entire 1,200-mile Namibian desert circled in red, purposefully making it hard to find. So, as long as the continent of Africa has sunshine, you have some time to find it. Mystery Monolith In 2020, authorities were conducting a routine flyover in the southeastern part of Utah, in the United States, when they came across this, the original Mystery Monolith. And then the Utah Monolith suddenly disappeared on the same day that a new one in Romania popped up, only to vanish itself less than a week later. And then a roundabout in the Democratic Republic of Congo became the latest site occupied by the Mystery Metallic Monolith. All in all, there have been sightings as far afield as Italy, Colombia, New Zealand, India, Bolivia, Japan, and Norway, among other countries. The monoliths are long vertical slabs of metal, each 10 to 12 feet tall. They appear with no warning and disappear just as quickly. Obviously, it baffled locals and the world went wild after it started trending. The isolated silver slab became a sensation, prompting speculation that extraterrestrials were involved. Others figured it might be an art installation or guerrilla marketing. The phenomena have been thoroughly documented worldwide, as the details about each specimen and any known information about their origins. So far, there have been 200 possible monolith sightings, 
including images shared on Google Earth of one supposedly in Antarctica. Mystery Arrows In 1920, the United States opened its first coast-to-coast -coast air mail delivery route. However, there were no good aviation charts in those days, so pilots had to eyeball their way across the country. It didn't always work. So the Postal Service solved the problem with the world's first ground-based civilian navigation system, a series of lit beacons that would extend from New York to San Francisco. Prior to this system, delivering mail took several days by train, but this idea simply reduced the time of delivering to about 30 hours, and even the least experienced pilots could follow the series of bright yellow arrows. Every 10 miles, pilots would pass them. The arrows were from 50 to 75 feet and painted bright yellow so pilots could see them from the sky. Each arrow would be surmounted by a steel tower and lit by a million candle-powered rotating beacons that could project light from an extremely long way at night. However, new advances in communication and navigation technology made the big arrows obsolete and they were decommissioned in the 1940s. Their yellow paint is gone. Their concrete cracks a little more with every winter frost and no one crosses their path much, except for coyotes and tumbleweeds. But they're still out there. So if you find yourself in the middle of nowhere in the desert, don't give up hope of making some pretty strange discoveries while you're there. The folks who captured these videos didn't, and look how they turned out. So like and subscribe and stay tuned for more.